In the previous video, we had discussed how to find the stress intensity, the vertical stress intensity at a point P, which is directly below the corner of a rectangular area. Now, we had, we had discussed that the theory that we studied, the patterns that we use, was limited when the point P is just below the corner, right? But what if we have a case where your target or the point of interest is not below the corner but instead at any point any point other than the corner for for instance in this case you have a rectangle a b c d and the point p is not below a corner point it is not below a it's not below b neither c nor d right it's at a point p below the center so in that case how to find the vertical stress intensity at a point P which is at a depth Z beneath the center now the idea is quite simple what you do is you subdivide the rectangle ABCD in such a way that each of the rectangle thus obtained will have a corner at P right so we are trying to get back to our fathom chart by subdividing their entire rectangle in this case ABCD into four different rectangles such that each of this formed rectangle will share a corner at P. Quite simple. So once you have that condition attained, you can directly apply the Fathom chart. Subdivide the rectangle. You have the plan which looks like this ABCD and I can cut the rectangles into four different rectangles marked as 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, rectangle, rectangle number 1 is AEPH, number 2 is EBFP, number 3 is FCGP, and number 4 is HPGD. So, every rectangle thus formed has got corner point P, right? Now, once you get that, it's quite simple. You add the influence factors, right? So, in short, you take AEPH that will have a length that will have a breadth so you get l you get b and you know what z value is so you divide l by z and b by z from which you get m and n so based on m and n you find the influence factor i n for the rectangle number one likewise you have the second rectangle then you have the third rectangle for each rectangle you'll have l and b you'll get m and n and you'll get i n values now in this picture since it's quite symmetrical with respect to both the axes all you have to do is just find out i n 1 multiplied by 4. now you have a second case a second case where you consider a point p which is outside the plan of the rectangle again the same principle gets applied here subdivision of the rectangle in this case you have rectangle which is loaded a b c d and the point p is not within that loaded rectangle but somewhere outside its plan area for instance let's assume that a b c d is a big building and your point of interest or the point where you are going to find the stress intensity is not within the plan of the building but somewhere outside it so in that case what you do is you draw a bigger rectangle in this case a bigger rectangle is drawn uh, i think i have a figure there yeah here you have a figure this is a plan figure abcd is a rectangle which is loaded and p is a point in plan at which you have to find the stress intensity so you draw a big rectangle a e p f such a way that that big rectangle has got a point p at the corner right but even in this case it's not quite simple because the loader area is 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 limited to a b c d and that rectangle doesn't share a corner point at p in that case what you can do is a bit of jigsaw puzzle there i can find sigma is at p using this equation i n 1 minus i n 2 minus i n 3 plus i n 4 it's quite simple all these influence factors i n 1 n 2 n 3 and n 4 corresponds to rectangles which share a corner at p right so for you to understand 
our 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 uh, intention is to have that the lower intensity q since it's just limited to this area some of all these influence factors should represent only this area nothing else so what i can do is if i take the big rectangle with l is equal to a e and b is equal to e p i'll get m and n for that rectangle i'll get the influence factor for that rectangle right now so i have this big rectangle which shares a point p corner i can subtract this rectangle which is d g p f from that so i'll get influence factor i in two there i'll i can subtract another rectangle h b e p from that so that corresponds to i n three so what really happens now is that the big rectangle minus this rectangle minus this rectangle so what went wrong here is that this area got subtracted twice so i'll add that area by influence factor four so in short i n one corresponds to a e p f i n two corresponds to b e p h and 3 corresponds to dgpf and once you subtract these two things area number cgps got by mistake subtracted twice so you need to add that once so that's in4 right quite simple so that's that's about how to find the stress distribution the vertical stress intensity at a point p which is outside the rectangular area now the next thing is about pressure distribution diagrams it's it's based on the busnesk equation that we studied ib into q by z square busnesk equation for uh, the vertical stress intensity due to a point load now three types of pressure distribution diagrams may be drawn using that number one is an isobar which looks like this isobar as the name suggests it's an imaginary curve a set of curves to be precise which joins points of equal stress intensity it's quite similar to the contour that we draw in surveying right so for instance in this picture if you take a look at this you can see that there's a line which looks kind of an onion shaped bulb there it's of 0.1 q which means 10 percent of the load that's applied is acting along this line so this line 0.1 q line connects every point where the stress intensity is 10 percentage of q like this you have different uh, different shapes uh, and it goes all the way up to 0 0.9 q there which is quite low which means the stress intensity is quite high so that's about isobar it's nothing but the curve which joins points of equal stress intensity right it's a curved contour symmetrical with respect to the axis passing through the point load you have the point load q here you have the axis passing through that so this isobar is quite symmetrical with respect to that axis and it resembles a bulb or an onion in geometry now there's something special about 0.1 q it's called a pressure bulb so the zone in which the stress has significant effect on the settlement of the structure is called a pressure bulb and you assume it to be uh, of 0.1 q which means the soil volume that comes within this 0.1 q this entire area can be assumed to play a role in the settlement of a footing or a foundation so uh, if, if you're a geotechnical engineer who is interested in stabilizing the soil if the soil is weak you need to take special interest around this region because this is a region where uh, the load is getting transferred and the settlement is to be assumed to be taking place so that's that's what we call as a pressure bulb 